Jean-Paul Gaultier, welcome to News Breakfast. Thank you. Now, you designed a collection of clothing for your mother and grandmother, I think, when you were 13. How did you want them to look? What, what image were you after for them? Uh, to be honest, I think I, I wanted to change them, you know, because I was looking, my grandmother let me see all the things at the TV. So I was finding them nice, but I wanted to make them a little like some of the stars that were in, at the TV at the time from some movie. You worked um, with Pierre Cardin and you worked later yeah. at Patou as well. What were the important lessons as a couturier that you picked up at those places? What were the key lessons? At Cardin, I should say that the most important thing was like uh, freedom because he is a very free man you know he, he took me you know i didn't go to school fashion school you know yes. only it's through my sketches that he liked you know so he said okay you will work for me and i saw that everything could become something else so it was fabulous uh, experience incredible at patu it was the contrary they, they have a lot of code old code you know so it's make me more rebel about what they were saying that gold is beautiful <laughs> and uh, you know black is uh, only sad and uh, that kind of thing you know like uh, codes that i didn't appreciate at all what's interesting in what you say though about the the changeability of of, of and the potential of what you were drawing is so interesting in your work Work because that that playfulness is so evident. The, uh, the 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 jacket that can you know turn into shorts and 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 the skirt that can be part of a jacket and and that transmutive quality. Why is that so important to you as a designer? Why are you always playing with that sort of potential in, a, in an item of clothing? Because I think there is no only one beauty. I think there is many beauty, many different things. I am I have the luck to make the profession. I love my passion. You know, I wanted to do that to be uh, come on. Uh, when I was a child, you know, and I succeed to make it my work. But for me, it's not my work, it's still my game. I am still playing with my game. So I am happy and everything is like positive on a lot of things that I receive. I didn't expect to be famous and didn't expect to be rich. I didn't expect like that I should have an exhibition. I didn't never expect that. So I am a lucky man. You're a very lucky man. And sitting in the middle of this, this of course, the wonderful exhibition that the National Gallery of Victoria is putting on that originated from Montreal. How do you feel as you look back at this extraordinary body of work? Because we're looking at it not necessarily chronolo chronologically arranged, but thematically, and, and you keep returning to these key themes all the way through your creative life. Alors, I should say, like, uh, bon, corsetry is like about the flesh, flesh tattoo, you know, on piercing, things that truly now, I started in 90, but now it's like full, everybody has tattoo everywhere, you know? Bon, in New Zealand they had before, I did, <laughs> <laughs> I must say. We'll credit but, them. Yeah, and also like a kind of uh, trompe l'oeil, you know, effect, and also, uh, what should I say, things also like are around, like uh, denim, all things that are, but I put them in a, I, I try to make, for example, the denim to make it like something haute couture, yes. you know, with f uh, feathers, with embroidery, things like that, you know, I try the camouflage also to become uh, like an enormous, uh, like a uh, uh, big ball dress, ballroom dress, you know, all that, you know, uh, I, I try to make the contrary and to show that there is no frontier in reality, what is beautiful, uh, what is ugly can be beautiful, done in a certain way. What's always interested me about your fashion as well is, is how incredibly strong and important female sexuality is and not just for women for, for men as well you you Definitely. use female for, female clothing forms for men and offer them the opportunity as well what is it about designing for the female form and the curve of the female form that's so exciting for you I think uh, it's beautiful. You know, I am from a generation which uh, it was after the woman's sleep, you know, where they burned their bra. So after well, that... Well, only, only a couple burned their bra. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> uh, and, uh, come on. So after that, there was like a new way which was post that generation and that wanted like say, okay, we uh, can even have like uh, uh, clothes that are like quite sexy and uh, quite uh, sexual, let's say, without being any uh, uh, acro, uh, uh, addicted uh, to sex or whatever. In some way, the fact that women can be also strong and fragile at the same time. And the same for men. So I try to make like equality for both. Like for men also to show their vulnerability and also the fact that it can be fragile, they can also cry. Voila. <laughs> we can all be liberated by a skirt, I guess. <laughs> exactly. And this is why I wanted to show like the male object That's that right. exists also, that even if it is taboo, 
I want to talk about a couple of the iconic pieces of clothing. Yeah. Do you think the um, the cone bra, you would have designed it at some point if Madonna had not come into your life, or was it only because of that collaboration? Big mistake. My cone bra, the first one I did, it was for my teddy, teddy bear. bear. <laughs> so it was before Madonna. You know, it was because my parents didn't want me to have like a doll. So me, I put to my teddy bear, paper, newspaper, that I cut like that and I put pins and it was a bra and it became a doll. So, so, so Madonna needs to be pleased that you had a teddy bear so that she exactly. could eventually wear the bra. She's not the one that inspired me the cone bra. <laughs> There's a number of dresses uh, in this exhibition that have been worn by high profile Australian yeah. stars, of course, yeah. Nicole Kidman and Kate Blanchett and the like. And you dress a number of those Australians. Do those um, Australian clients of yours, do they, have a, do they bring a, a different sensibility or a different attitude to this kind of uh, dressing and, and, and red carpet dressing that's different to your European clients? I should say that I love, I was also influenced by the cinema, uh, uh, Australian cinema, Bazulman with, you know, Strictly Ballroom. I, I love that movie. It was absolutely fantastic. On the one he did also about Romeo and Juliet, his version was absolutely unique and very modern. Fabulous. And also, also, of course, Moulin Rouge, which is absolutely fantastic. And it mixed like, on the, you know, I am French and Parisian, and I love that Pigalle that you, that you are, for example, in those dress, you know, Pigalle and uh, Moulin Rouge, you know, and there is a Moulin Rouge in Pigalle. <laughs> so I, uh, uh, I think it treated so well, so wonderfully. I think that no French could have done it better. Um, Jean-Paul, when you look at these extraordinary works on all these mannequins, is there a little part of you that looks at at least one or two and wants to rip it off the mannequin and have another go and fix it up and change something? I should say that the team here in Australia have been wonderful. The clothes are already well presented. You can see it like very well. You can see all the detail by the light, by the team. We, we prepare it, you know. I think it's truly like wonderful. Even there is some outfit where I remarked some details that I forgot. And it is my baby, so I know them very well. Yes. But I forgot, you know, because, and because of the light, I said, ah, it's true, it's finished like that, you know, by that transparency that I didn't remember. So I see it in another way, you know. So it's for me, like even if it's my baby, but my baby here in Australia, they are different. And I must say, I'm very proud of them. I'm very, very happy you're proud of your babies. You should be. Jean-Paul Gaultier, merci beaucoup. Merci, a pleasure, a pleasure.